Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and talk about mostly instantaneous angular position, angular velocity, uh, angular acceleration, and how to find those things. First little thing I want to chat, chat about first. So we're dealing with a lot of different accelerations now. Okay, so all year we've dealt with linear acceleration, which is when an object speeds up or slows down as it moves in a straight line. That's like if I'm running down the sidewalk and I speed up and slow down or change directions as I go in a linear motion. Again, the equation for that, is, or the symbol for that, is just going to be an A. And that will oftentimes measure in meters per second squared. Okay, it's in triple acceleration. So we talked about this during our circular motion unit. Again, a synonym for centripetal. Again, centripetal means center seeking. Keep that in mind. And radial is just like along the radial line. So radial acceleration is another name for centripetal acceleration. And this is just an acceleration that changes the direction an object moves, but keeps its speed constant. So if we have something moving in a circle, okay, so let's say something's moving in a circle. Let's say it's moving, what is that, clockwise. Okay, so if at some point I were to draw and it's moving at a constant speed, its velocity vector this way, its acceleration vector is perpendicular, so on and so forth. Velocity is tangent, acceleration is perpendicular to that, center seeking or pointing towards the center of the acceleration. So centripetal acceleration, again, that is the symbol AC, and that just makes something change directions. And again, units we use for that are going to be meters per second squared. So our last hit acceleration, which is the new one we're talking about, is going to be an angular acceleration. And this is when an object speeds up or slows down as it rotates. So again, the angular velocity is changing. So that is like if, let's say we have something rotating, and let's say it's most rotating counterclockwise, and let's say it speeds up as it rotates, or it slows down, or the last thing, it changes rotation direction. So it goes from clockwise to counterclockwise, or vice versa. Angular acceleration, that is when we're going to use the symbol alpha, and we will oftentimes measure that in radians per second squared. I know there's a lot there. Do make sure to write this down because we will reference this all year. Super important. Also, very easy to mix up all these different accelerations now, but writing it down will help. Cool. Let's go ahead and chat about our next thing. Okay. So what I went ahead and did is I made a little table for all the linear quantities that we've talked about all year. So we have linear instantaneous velocity, and again, that's derivative of position with respect to time. Same with ex linear acceleration. We have average velocity, average acceleration. What I want you to do in the column on the right, so write this on your own paper, take a guess of what, like for the first one example, what is instantaneous angular velocity? Write down a guess for that equation, and so on and so forth, and then check back in on the video. Cool. So now that you've done it, I'll go ahead and write down some things. So instantaneous velocity, now we're going to deal with instantaneous Angular velocity, you guessed it. So that is going to be instead of v, angular velocity is omega, and it is derivative of angular position is theta over um, with respect to the derivative of time. So d theta dt. And again, that's instantaneous angular velocity. I'll just go ahead and fill out the rest, and then you can watch it. Okay? So I went ahead and wrote down all of our given. Um, and again, we're just replacing angular quantities with what we originally had as linear quantities. Cool. And again, when you're doing these problems, we'll do some problems involving both average and instantaneous quantities. Do make sure to write down the equation. It really helps avoid some silly mistakes. Cool. Let's go ahead and do some solving. Okay. So I took this problem from one of my favorite textbooks, the Young and Freedom textbook. Cool. So let's go ahead and read this problem yourself, try it yourself, and then check back in on the video. Okay. So the hand lead rotates with angular velocity given by omega t equals 5 minus 0.8 c squared, where omega is in radians per second and t is in seconds. A. Calculate the angular acceleration as a function of time. Okay, so we want angular acceleration as a function of time. Anytime I see something like that and like omega is not constant at all, we're going to go ahead and deal with the derivative. So for A, alpha or instantaneous acceleration is just going to be derivative of omega with respect to time. Write out the equation before you take the derivative. So it's derivative of, and I'll put this function is, 5 minus 0.8 c squared. Cool. To take the derivative, I just go ahead and do the good old power rule. So derivative of 5, that's just a constant. Derivative of constant is 0. So this is going to be minus 1.6 t. Cool. We got it. So that's alpha of t. Cool. Let's go ahead and go on to b. So we want the instantaneous angular acceleration at t equals 3 seconds. Okay. So instantaneous, that's at a split time. We found an equation 
for instantaneous acceleration, let's just plug that on in. So it's going to be alpha of 3 equals just negative 1.6 times 3, and that is, and I got negative 4.8 radians per second squared. Okay, let's go ahead and go into C. So C is the average angular acceleration from time interval t equals 0 to t equals 2 seconds. Okay, people always, always, always do silly mistakes. Write out the equation that will help avoid a silly mistake. Okay, so average angular acceleration. So that's alpha with a line over it. So that is going to be change in omega over change in time. So again, this is omega, our final omega. So omega at 3 seconds. Take away our initial omega, which is omega at 0 over the change in time. And again, that's like, again, change in omega is like omega f minus omega i. Cool. So let's, okay, so where is our omega equation? So that is what we have all the way up here. So that is our omega equation we're using. We're not using this negative 1.6t. That's alpha right there. That's instantaneous acceleration, not omega. So we don't actually even need to deal with part A at all for this one. So let's go ahead and see what some things are. I'll go ahead and just do a side. So omega of 3, that's going to be 5 minus 0.8 times 3 squared. And I got... Um, and I got negative 2.2 radians per second. Okay, so omega of 0, let's go ahead and put that in. So that's like 5 minus 0.8 times 0 squared. Do, do, do. That's 0 cancels out, and we're left with 5 radians per second. Cool, we got it all. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So omega of 3 is negative 2.2. Take away omega of 0, we had 5. Over change of time, that's the time interval that's changing. So we're dealing with a 3 second time interval. And I got, and I got negative 2.4 radians per second squared. Perfect. Thanks for watching.